All right, it's 512. We're listening to Layers. Let's build a Death Watch Primaris Reaver. To my hobby desk, we are going to build this guy. He is Reaver 2. Before that, let's talk shoulder pads. This is a cool chapter pad off the Death Watch sprue. It has a raised emblem, I like it. That is a Death Watch shoulder pad. I bought upgrades so I could put a Death Watch shoulder pad on this Reaver. I have extra shoulder pads from the chapters to put on the other arm, like this really cool Space Wolf one. But I wasn't sure if it would fit on the arm that I want to use, which is this one. So I tried to make a green stuff mold of just the emblem and I thought I might cut it out. Now it turns out that I think I can fit this over here. It does fit a little bit. So we're going to pop the mold off anyway and see if we can glue it on. If it looks good, that's what we're going to do. If it doesn't look good, then we're going to try to get the chapter pad on. So I wetted my fingers up and now we're going to try to pop the green stuff off and we'll see what the pad looks like. Looks a lot better than the last one, but it's still not quite sharp enough in the detail. So I think we're going to just use the shoulder pad and I'm going to keep practicing the molds for the future. We're going to trim up this shoulder pad real quick before we raid the rest of the sprue. So for the chest and the legs, we're going to need pieces 15 through 17. And uh, this is interesting. The tactical marines and the death guard I did, the legs were all one piece. This time it's two separate legs. So we're going to grab the sprue and here are the pieces we need. And we're going to clip those out and clean them up. Here's my clippers. When you're clipping from the sprue, you want to make sure the flatter part of the clippers is what is closest to the actual piece. Sometimes you have to flip the sprue around to make sure that it cuts properly. Now we're gonna clean these up with my hobby knife and my hobby files and just cut off all the sprue marks. Sometimes you can just slide the hobby knife along and scrape off the marks. Other times it's easier to go with the file. I mean, you can just always use the hobby knife. I prefer the files sometime because I won't cut my fingers and uh, I don't accidentally cut the piece of plastic. Something new I noticed is all these pieces that go together all have a B engraved on the inside. So it must be something new they're doing on the sprues just to help you make sure you have pieces that go together. So that was kind of neat. Uh, we're going to take our plastic glue. We're going to dry fit everything first to make sure it fits in the right place. And then we're going to use our plastic glue and then press everything together. Um, there was another piece I need, decided I need to clean here. So I went and I did that. Again, plastic glue holds plastic together because there's chemical reaction and the glue actually melts the plastic. And then once it hardens, it forms almost a weld and it is tacky enough that it will hold the pieces together, but it is also loose enough such that you can move them around once you put them in. This is very useful and I take advantage of it a little bit later when I do some of the extra bits. Pieces like this, I just hold it together for about 10 seconds and that's usually enough for the tackiness of the glue to hold it together after that point. It takes about 30 minutes for it to completely dry. Uh, I'm just dry fitting the legs to make sure I know how it's going to fit on. I've never built these guys before, so it takes me a little bit. And then just a little bit of plastic glue. And then press the leg in. Once I get both of them in, it is sturdy enough for it to stand up. In the past, this is where I would put on the base. But I want to try a fancier base, so we're eventually going to pin this guy. Um, but the way he is built, he will stand up on his own as long as I don't knock him. Took me a little while to figure out how this leg piece would go on. Just gonna stand him here and let him dry. 
and we're gonna start working on arms. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna do this alternate build. So we need arm number 20. We're gonna pull that off the sprue and then that's the arm that'll get the death watch shoulder pad. So we're gonna cut off one of those, clean up the pieces and the death watch shoulder pad will fit right on. Again, even though Primaris Marines are built bigger, the shoulder pads and the heads are the same size as your tactical Marines. So I can use the shoulder pads from this upgrade sprue and turn these reavers into death watch reavers. Always dry fit, even if it looks easy. Um, sometimes my brain is slow. This arm was made to take shoulder pads, so it's gonna slide over really easy. Uh, if I didn't use this shoulder pad, there were blank ones on the reaver sprue. The other arm, however, was not designed to take shoulder pad. It has one built in. This does slide a little bit, so I thought maybe I could slide it in between the grappling hook if I had some space. So I tried to cut the grappling hook, so the dividing part by the shoulder, and it broke. Uh, this actually is gonna work out better for me later. And so I'm gonna proceed to then try to file down the death watch chapter shoulder pad so that I can slide it and try to fit it in between. And you're gonna see me doing lots of filing. Here on out, I file some, check it, file some more, check it. And then once I even start mutilating this by cutting more, it's always do a little bit, check, do a little bit, check. So the filing didn't work out. I was never able to slide it through. In trying to, I finally just popped this little part off the back of the grappling hook and then just tried to fit the shoulder pad over and the pad that's built in the arm was still too big. So now we just grab files and knives and we start cutting down the pad that was already on the arm to bring it down to a size where I could fit the death watch chapter pad over it. And again, it would be file, cut, file, cut, check it, go back, cut some more, file some more. And I just kept checking it and checking it, checking it and doing a little bit more filing or a little bit more cutting until I got it down enough that I was able to fit it over the top with some plastic glue. Trying super hard not to cut my fingers off right here. So I finally got it to a point where it fit over nicely and it was kind of snug. So I got some plastic glue and we stuck the sucker on and then we looked to see what we could do about restoring the back portion of the grappling hook where it comes closely into contact with the shoulder pad. Take some time to see how it would fit on the torso just to make sure I didn't totally bone the whole process. And so now, I took the piece from the back and see, saw how it fit, it does not fit. So there is a natural kind of indent in there. So I decided to just chop it off at that piece, which was an easy cut and see if the fatter portion would fit back in. It did, it was still kind of tight, but I did get it in there. So I just took some plastic glue and uh, fit it back in and I just filled with it until it was in a reasonable position. So that again, if you examined it closely, you could see that it wasn't a good fit, but two feet away. It worked out great. So in the end, I got the arm I wanted with the shoulder pad I wanted and the grappling hook looks close enough that uh, it even took my wife a while to notice that the thing was different. So it has a little extended groove there, but I think it'll just give flavor to the final piece. So sh this arm and shoulder pad done and I am happy with it. I think the torso is dry. So we're gonna go ahead and get the two extra grenade pouches and a holstered bolt pistol, heavy bolt pistol put on this guy. So I just cut him off the sprue, 
and uh, clean them up a little bit. And we're going to use plastic glue. And this time you're going to see the fact that you can put the glue on and then move the piece around a little bit. And that's going to help a lot in this process because these are tiny and they're very fiddly. And so I'm going to dab a little glue and then I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of just get it up to the reaver. And then I'm going to place them onto the reaver. And the plastic glue, again, it's tacky enough so that it sticks, but it takes so long to dry. I have plenty of time to adjust this stuff and put them all in the right place. Um, you know, I didn't have to put both of them, but Death Watch guys always have extra pouches and grenades on the chest. And so the Reavers already kind of look that way and they give you enough pieces to double these up on everybody. So I just went for it. So dry fitted the gun, try to figure out how it was gonna go on there. So he has a grappling hook, and so I wanted to make sure the holstered one was one of the heavy bolt pistols and not one of the grappling hooks. You can tell the difference on the screw. And then we just put the glue on and stuck the holster on and called it good. All right, now that's done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start uh, mounting our sub assemblies. So here's some cork with a pin and some sticky tack, and I'm just gonna stick these guys to it. These are really easy sub assemblies. Now for the head, we're using one of the full helmeted ones because I can't do faces or heads. Uh, I gotta practice more. We're gonna clean it up and we're gonna pin this. So we're not gonna use sticky tack. We're gonna take my pin vise and we're going to drill a little hole in the bottom. And then we're going to take a pin with a tiny bit of super glue, enough to hold it in, but not enough to keep me from popping it off. And we're gonna hold it on there and uh, it'll stay secure and I'll be able to paint it and prime it this way. We're going to do the same thing to the uh, torso and legs now because I want to spend more time on the base. I've never done this before with this guy, but uh, it was a lot easier than doing the head. Once we get both these holes in, the plan is to take a pin that I already made of a paper clip, cut it in half so that I have two of them, and we're just going to dab a little bit of super glue on the end of these, and we're going to insert them into the holes that we drilled, and then I am going to use the pin vise to drill some holes in a bigger piece of cork, and I'm going to mount the whole Primaris guy on a piece of cork. So I'll have the head on one, of the body and torso on the other, and I'll have the two arms, and the backpack on a final one. Usually you just need enough room in there for enough of the pin to grab on the inside. Again, you don't want to overload it because you want to be able to bust these guys out later. I was running out of time and running out of storage space on my phone. So still shots. Here's the backpack. I put it on a pin. Then I put on grab shoots. You'll notice I took the icon or I got a new backpack. I didn't use the mold from the bonus video because in the end I didn't like it. So I'm going to show you still shots of all the rest of it. We're going to go ahead and prime these up, start painting tomorrow. If you hobbied today and made a video, please link it in the comments below. I would love to take a look at it. And until next time, or tomorrow when we paint this, have a good one.